I come from a fishing family, and gradually I became interested in fishing. And like many anglers who fish for salmon, I completely fell in love. The life cycle of the salmon is something spectacular. It's born as an egg in a river, and if it survives, it then has to migrate throughout the North Atlantic range, and it finds its way back to the native river. I saw the stocks going down in numbers, and I felt, by God, if it continues this way, they will disappear within a lifetime. So we have to do something about it. To save the wild salmon, Ori Vigfusen had to find a way to stop the practice of net fishing throughout the North Atlantic. For years, salmon were an important part of the catch for large-scale commercial fisheries in Greenland, the UK, and other countries. Because salmon travel set routes during migration, it's easy for small boat nestmen to catch large numbers. Overfishing devastated the stock. By the late 1980s, more than half the North Atlantic salmon population was wiped out. I feel that my mission in life is to get back the salmon stocks into historic abundance where it was sort of 200 years ago. To accomplish his mission, Ori founded the North Atlantic Salmon Fund in 1989 as an international coalition. Okay, my friend. Yeah. Two innovative ideas propelled NASF forward, pay netsmen not to fish, and finding alternatives to salmon fishing. He went directly to the netsmen, river managers, and anglers with his ideas about the salmon crisis. Ori has been successful with the fishermen because he has spoken directly to them, not uh, to their governments. And uh, that's why fishermen trust Ori. Right from the beginning, we realized that just handing casts over was not enough. So we decided to use our expertise to develop other sustainable fisheries, like in Greenland. They are now the biggest producers and exporters of lumpfish caviar to the world. By the end of the 1990s, NASF used strategic buyouts to stop most salmon drift net fishing across the North Atlantic. Ori negotiated multi-million dollar buyouts and moratoriums with governments and commercial fishers in Greenland, Faroe Islands, Iceland, England, and elsewhere. In 2003, Ireland remained one of the last nations to fiercely hold on to its drift net fishing rights. Governments are limited in the type of pressure or influence they can bring to a negotiating process, whereas Ode is able to approach all sectors. In a sense, it's a, it's a middleman, but someone who's with, whose commitment is obvious to all the players. In the past 15 years, NASF buyouts have produced a 75% drop in drift net fishing in the North Atlantic. The organization estimates that over 5 million salmon have returned to their native rivers. As an avid sports fisherman, Ori has a direct link to the angler community, a well-connected group. With support from entrepreneurs, lawyers, former heads of state, Big Fusen has raised over $35 million for his work. He's been a very astute businessman. He seems to be eminently fair and convincing people, you know, they make more money not fishing than fishing. We used to say that it is 20 times more valuable caught by rotten line than in a net and it creates probably uh, 20 times more jobs in these rural areas than the net caught salmon. As the driving force of NASF, Ori travels abroad constantly to network, fundraise, and negotiate. In 2006, Ireland bowed to EU and NASF pressure, ultimately agreeing to a $46 million buyout of the country's salmon fishermen. This breakthrough will be a victory if the Irish government lives up to its spirit of the agreement, providing compensation for 850 netsmen and allowing an estimated 68,000 salmon to return to their native river. In 2007, the Scottish government announced it would not renew drift net leases in the northern region of Straithy Point. This is already in Iceland. I didn't really, in the beginning, see myself as an environmentalist. I saw this as a simple business opportunity. We want to reinvent the fishing industry to employ our ideas for quality and sustainability. For outstanding environmental achievement in islands and island nations, the 2007 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Ori Tikfusen, Reykjavik, Iceland. <laughs>